Hello again. Well, now you've learned about the basics of percentages. You've also learned how to write percentages as fractions and as decimals, and how to do some mental calculations for some of the easier types of percentages, those that are multiples of 5%. Now that you've got all the basics down, we're ready to start tackling the types of percentage problems that you might see at work or in your ordinary life. So let's get started. Grab your guided student notes and your calculator, and let's begin. All right, so in a situation, we have percentage problems, and there are three parts to a percentage problem. Uh, it stands to reason, of course, that one of the parts is the percent. And it's pretty easy to find the percent because, of course, this is next to the percent symbol. or the word percent if we're writing things out. The important thing to think about here is that when we're working with an equation, we're going to need to convert the percentage to a decimal. So all that prep work we did earlier will come in handy here. After that, there's the base. The base is the whole. It's the starting amount. It's whatever you're taking a percent of. So percents don't stand alone. You always have a percentage of something, and that would be the base. So the base is the whole. Or depending upon your situation, it's the starting value. Or maybe you might want to just think of it as the reference quantity. Either way, when we write our word equations, you'll be able to recognize the base and tell what it is, because this is going to be the thing that is next to the word of, because percentages are of something. The amount is the part. The part doesn't mean that it's smaller than the whole. It just means whatever it is that we are comparing to the whole. So sometimes it's nice to talk about this as maybe a new value. Or you could think of it as um, what's being described by the percent. So don't let that word part fool you. Just as we had improper fractions, like you could have uh, 17 pieces of cheesecake and it took 12 pieces to make the whole, the 17 pieces is still the part. And the same thing is true for percentages. So the part, the amount, does not have to be smaller than the whole. When we're working with our word equations, the amount is next to the word is. The nice thing about percentage problems is that the word equation is always the same. So let me slide down here a little bit. As we talk about our word equation, its general form says that an amount is a percent of the base.
So let's take this amount. We're going to call it A for amount. So the nice thing about the word equation is it puts everything in line for the algebraic equation. You already know that is translates as equals. We've got our percentage. So this is something that we're going to need to rewrite as a decimal. So I'm just going to say percent as a decimal here. Of tells us we need to multiply. And the base, that will be B. And so there's our equation. It's a very short equation, very simple. Not a lot of algebra algebraic manipulation required. And this is always going to be the way we're going to work. So after you're reading a situation, if you can condense your situation down to a tiny sentence like this that says something is a percent of something else, then you're ready to go. So let's try one. Let's talk about determining an unknown amount. These are the easiest ones. They're also the ones that look very much like the ones that you did in the last section. You did things like 10% of 35 and 5% of 284, things like that. And pretty much it was straight multiplication. We just did it mentally. So now what we're going to do is see why it's straight multiplication. So here we go. What? That's the thing we don't know. We'll call it x. Is 82%, we'll write that as a decimal, 0.82, of, means we need to multiply, 135. Use our trusty calculator, 0.82, multiplied by 135, and that tells us 110.7. 110.7. Point seven is 82% of 135. Of course, we always want to check and make sure that our answer is reasonable. 82% is more than half, sort of close to the whole thing. 110.7 is more than half and sort of close to all of 135. So it's in the right ballpark. All right, let's flip the page. One rule of thumb for HVAC is that if you're going to use a cylinder for recovering refrigerant, you should never fill it to more than 80% of its capacity. So let's see, here we go. We have a cylinder with a capacity of 50.25 pounds of refrigerant. We'd like to know what's the maximum amount of refrigerant that could be put into the container. And the first thing we want to do is condense this all down into a very short word equation. An amount is a certain percentage of something. So the fill or the fill capacity, the amount that we fill it up, the stuff you put in, I think I'm just going to write fill capacity. Is 80% of the cylinder capacity. Something like that. Enough to tell us that the fill capacity is the amount. And we don't know what that is, so we'll just call it x. 80% We'll write that as a decimal, 0.8. The whole, the cylinder capacity, we have that information. That's 50.25. So as an equation, this says x is equal to 0.8 multiplied by 50.25. Let's see, 0.8 multiplied by 50.25 gives us 40.2. All right, so no more than 40.2 
let's not forget our units here. This would be a pound of refrigerant should be put into the cylinder, even though it can hold or has space enough to hold 50.25 pounds of refrigerant, we're only going to put in 40.2. And that's, of course, because if the cylinder heats up, the stuff can expand, and we don't want to cause any dangerous situations. Let's try shifting down here just a little bit. So now you know that if we're trying to determine the unknown amount, we pretty much have a straight multiplication problem. Let's try the unknown base and see what we have. So here we have an amount is a percentage of something. The amount is 94. Is tells us equals 13% as a decimal, 0.13. Of means multiply. And the thing we don't know, we'll call x. That's it. You already know that to isolate the x, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 0.13. On the right hand side, the 0.13s will cancel and x will be all by itself. On the left hand side, we have 94 divided by 0.13. And let's see, we need to round to the nearest tenth. So we'll say 723.1. Let's give that a quick mental check. 13% is a little bit more than 10%. 10% of 723.1 you know would be 72.31. And 94 is a little bit more than that. So this is good. But really, that's all we need. 723.1. There, make our notes complete. It's that easy. The key, of course, is getting that word equation down. So let's try a situation. Here we have some solder. This 95-5 solder is 95% tin and 5% antimony. Must be how it gets its name. How much of this solder can be made with seven pounds of tin? Well, let's see, what do we know? Um, the tin is 95% of the solder. Okay, what do we know? Do we know anything about the tin? We do, we have seven pounds of it. A is seven. As a decimal, we'll use 0.95. How much solder do we have? Well, I don't know. That's what the question was asking. That's pretty much it. Seven is equal to 0.95 multiplied by x. Hang on a second. There, clean that up a little bit. All we have to do is divide both sides by 0.95 to isolate that variable. So we divide by 0.95 on the right, divide by 0.95 on the left, and let's see what we get. 7 divided by 0.95 is... Oh, okay, so we got this long thing here. Good thing we have some rounding directions. They ask us to round to the nearest hundredth of a pound. So x is 7.37. So 7.37 pounds of solder can be made with 7 pounds of tin. And of course, adding in some antimony. Does that sound about right? Well, let's see. The solder was 95% tin. That means almost all of the solder is tin. Seven pounds is pretty much almost all of 7.37 pounds. Sounds good. All right. The last thing would be what do we do if we want to find the percentage? And finding the percentage is a little bit trickier. Not a lot, just a little. We already know how the formula is going to work. An amount is a certain percent of the base. The thing about it is, is that this percent is as a decimal. So if we're looking for the percent, the equation is going to give us a decimal. 
and that means that we are going to need to convert it to a percentage. So we need to convert the decimal to a percentage. Let's see how that works. 823 is some percent of 700. We have our basic format here. 823 is means equals. The percent is unknown, so we'll call it x. Of means multiply. And 700 is, well, 700. All right, before we start, let's think about this for a second. What's the base? What's the whole? That base is next to the word of, so it takes 700 things to make the whole. We happen to have 823 of them. This is more than the whole. That means we should expect the percentage to be more than 100%. All right, otherwise, we're just gonna solve like usual. Divide both sides by 700. And that'll isolate x. And the calculator says that 823 divided by 700 is that. Okay, I'm not gonna write anything over here by x just yet. Let's think about the directions. They ask us to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. That doesn't mean to round this to the nearest tenth. We're gonna to need to convert this to a percentage, move that decimal point two spaces to the right, and then keep a tenth's place. So when we're rounding, that means that we are going to need three decimal places. Two for the conversion and one for the tenth of a percent that they want. All right, so now come back over here to the answer. 1.17 and that five is going to round up to be a six. So when we convert this to a percentage, the decimal point is going to move two spaces, and we will have 117.6%. 823 is 117.6% of 700. 823 is more than all of 700. All right, flip the page. Let's try a situation here. Efficiency. The efficiency of a motor is usually given as a percentage. And what that says is that the output power is a percentage of the input power. Because of course you have things like friction, um, I don't know, other stuff that gives you some sort of power loss and you don't get everything out that is sitting on the label. In this case, we have a 70 horsepower motor that only delivers 63.14 horsepower. And the question is, what's the efficiency of the motor? And the first thing we want to do is get that word equation down. And the nice thing about the word equation is that sometimes you can already see it or you've already heard it. Okay. Output is a percentage. of the input. So let's see, what do we have? Output, that's the A. What's the output? The 70 or the 63.14? The 63.14 is some percentage, which we don't know, of the input, that would be 70. So our equation looks like this, 63.14 equals x multiply because of the of times 70. There we go. That's pretty much all there is to it. We divide both sides by 70 to isolate the variable. Let's see, 63.14, whoops, not 1, 1, 1, 4 divided by 70, 0 0.902.
So x is equal to 0 0.902. Remember, we have to convert this to a percentage. We'll put that little reminder here. And that tells us that this particular motor is 90.2% efficient because we've taken that decimal point and moved it two spaces to the right. All right, well now you've got all the background that you need. We're either missing the percentage, the base, or the amount. So when you come down here, here are a couple for you to try. This first one, the word equation is written for you. It's your job to identify what's A, what's the percent, what's B, and then solve the equation. Pause the recording until you're done, and then come back when you're ready. Hopefully you started off like that and identified the tolerance as being four volts. The percent, of course, is the unknown, and the base is what the voltage is supposed to be. And so 4 is equal to x times 115. And then as you divide both sides by 115, we get this long decimal. But we know that we need to round to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So we need two spaces for the conversion and then two more spaces for the hundredths of a percent. So this means we will need to keep four decimal places. So after we've divided by 115 on both sides, we will say that x is 0 0.0349. So this line has a tolerance of 3.49% because, of course, we moved that decimal two spaces to the right. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you should probably try one more. We think. Oh, yes, we have one more. Flip the page. This one doesn't have the word equation written. So you'll need to come up with that one yourself. Pause the recording. Come back when you're ready. Hopefully you've eaten at restaurants enough to know that the tip is a percentage of the bill. Of course, the tip now becomes the A. That's $6.50. The percent is 18%, and we write that as a decimal. And the bill was the unknown. So $6.50 turned out to be 18% of something, of that unknown bill. And of course we need to divide both sides by 0 0.18. $6.50, yes, yeah, $6.50 divided by 0.18. There we go. What are we gonna do with that? Well, this is money, so we want to round to the nearest hundredth this x, the nearest cent, 36.11. So as it turns out, the food bill was $36.11. And that's pretty much it. In the next lesson, we'll talk about things like sales tax and discounts and percent increases and percent de decreases, but they all work the same as these. There's a couple of tiny twists, but for the most part, it's exactly like what we just did. So get a good handle on this, do your homework, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.